just in case you missed it last time on frugal couple alrighty guys so we are here wow Philadelphia cream cheese too so y'all he pulled one out it is not as cool as we would have liked Hey guys, before we get started, uh, we have a subscriber on here by the name of Dana, who's a longtime subscriber, always comments, so sweet, and she just let us know that she's actually in the hospital with COVID right now in ICU. So you guys, please join me in praying for Dana that we already know everything's going to be fine, right? Because we know who's in control. Okay, so just send some prayer requests her way. If you don't believe in praying, if you could send some positive thoughts, that would be great too. Dana, we love you. Get well soon, girl. All right, guys, so to start this video, I got two packs of this flat iron steak, and I actually got it at Crest. And this was roughly one was $7.33, and the other one was $6 and something. But you know, we very, very, very rarely buy meat, so we were okay with spending this. And we wanted a good tasting steak, so that's why we chose to go this option. I have some sub bread, we have some provolone cheese by Borden, some cheese whiz, some spreadable butter, but you can use margarine if you so prefer. We have a bell pepper and an onion, and then as far as spices, I have some steak seasoning, some creole seasoning, some black pepper, we have some onion powder and some garlic powder. And then of course, last but not least, we have some Worcestershire sauce as well. And this is all you need to get this sandwich up and going. You guys, it's gonna be so good, I can't wait. All right guys, so let's get started. So I know people are divided. Some people do not like peppers and onions with their Philly cheesesteak. They just want meat and cheese. I love the peppers and onions. I feel like it definitely helps to make this sandwich. So I am just going to um, thinly slice a bell pepper and an onion, depending on how much you want like mixed in with your meat. Basically, you can do a whole pepper and a whole onion, or you can just do like half and half. I like a lot of it, so like I said, I went ahead and did a whole one, and I'm just going to put it in a pan with some butter. I put my bell peppers first, just cause they take a little longer to cook, and then my onion. And yes, now for this, I didn't want to do like regular steak em, so I actually purchased, you guys, I bought a flat iron steak. I actually bought two. Now this is a pretty inexpensive cut. It was only like seven, six dollars or whatever per pack. So it wasn't bad, but still, you know, for us to buy meat, you know I had to really want this. So anyway, so I am just going to kind of thinly slice this as well. I didn't get it super thin, but thin enough that I didn't want to bite into like really thick um, chunks of meat in my sandwich. So I was just going to do one steak to start, however, I was like, I might as well do both. That way we can eat as much as we want and then we have some for leftovers and I don't have to recook it. So um, moment of transparency, y'all, I saw a fly and I do not like flies, gnats, anything like that, especially when I'm cooking. And when I see one, y'all, I promise, I, everything has to go in Ziploc bags until I kill it. So that's why I put that meat in the Ziploc bag, just because I didn't know where he flew to. But I went ahead and cut this extra steak as well, um, because yeah, it was gonna get eaten. So let's season this meat. First of all, I'm going in with some Worcestershire sauce. I said that all wrong, sorry. And I'm using about maybe a tablespoon of that just to give uh, the seasoning something to kind of stick to. I'm going in with some freshly cracked black pepper as well. You don't have to super season your meat. You just want it to have a little, you know, bite, a taste to it. Going in with some Creole seasoning and that is Tony Chacheret's, my absolute favorite. Then I'm going in with the steak seasoning that I actually got at Aldi's. It was only 99 cents, you guys, and I would compare this to the McCormick brand. It is so good and so much cheaper. And of course, I'm going in with my holy grail, some um, garlic powder, 
that is great value from Walmart and then also some onion powder that is Spice Classics. I think I got this at Crest. It was still like 89 cents so it's not expensive at all. And of course I'm just going to mix it all together and then throw it in that Ziploc bag because at this point I still had not found and taken care of that little pesky fly that was in my kitchen. So everything was getting wrapped up. It's also up to you how done you want your peppers and onions. Some people like a little bit of a bite. I like mine sauteed pretty nicely. You can see I have um, a little like crust, golden edge, whatever on those onions. That's perfect. So I'm just gonna add the meat in and it will still give those peppers and onions time to cook while the meat is getting done and I am just going to get to sauteing it to make sure everything is blended together. Now if you notice I didn't really season those vegetables because a lot of the seasoning from the meat gets on there but if you want a little extra seasoning don't um, be afraid to add some garlic, onion, whatever. Just watch the salt because you don't want it too salty especially since we're going to be adding some cheese. All right guys, so this cooked about 10 minutes or so. I just wanna make sure all that meat is done. So I am just going to start pulling this out of the pan and that easy, that simple, dinner is done. All right guys, so this is what it looks like when it came out the pan. Now you can eat it just like this. You can add some mashed potatoes or some rice and this can be a meal, but you know, I had my heart set on this sandwich, so let's get it. I'm gonna add a little more butter into this pan because I have an idea of how I want my bread. I don't want it cold out the package. So I'm gonna let this butter melt and then I'm just going to warm my bun in here as well as toast the inside just a bit. All right guys, and of course, even though I'm making a video, I gotta keep it real, I use the paper plate. And you just pile your meat on this sandwich and oh my goodness, y'all, it is so good. Now I don't worry about buttering my buns at this point because you know, I just toasted them in butter and I'm gonna be putting cheese on here as well. So to me, there's no need to, but you know, do what you prefer. I'm using some Borden provolone cheese and I'm just putting that right there. Y'all, and then I tried to close it and I realized I had the top on the bottom. Y'all, I'm just all messed up. So let me tell you what I did. I wanted it to be perfect. So I took that cheese off and put it right back on. <laughs> this time it is, um, the correct way and it's great now i am also going to warm up some of my cheese whiz you can use this cold if you prefer totally up to you i like to microwave mine just a little bit so i can kind of pour it on i only microwaved it about 20 seconds but while i am doing that i'm just going to put the rest of my meat up let it cool off just a bit and then stick it in the fridge just trying to multitask so i don't have so much to do at the end of the day all right guys, now listen, I know this is a family channel, but put your kids up because it's about to get real X-rated here. Look at how this cheese, <laughs> poor, I can't believe I just said that, but it's so, oh my God. Look at this cheese, you guys, check this out. Look at that. That that gives me the Philly cheesesteak experience. Hold on, let me do it in reverse for you just so you can see it again. Like, oh my gosh. Y'all looking at this just makes me realize how freaking good this was. This was so good. Oh my goodness, this was so good. I wanna make another one very soon. Look at that. Each bite had the meat in it, it had the cheese in it. It was just perfect but I wanted to show you guys because trust me we ate this till it was gone now the next day we wanted it again but you know it was cold and I didn't really want to microwave it be microwave it because I felt like it made it too tough the steak so I'm showing you how I warm it up I just put a little bit of meat in the pan and I put some of the provolone cheese on top and just melted it in the pan look at that oh my goodness Y'all, it was so good. Babe thoroughly enjoyed this. So did I. And of course, we're not done because you already know I had to put some of the cheese whiz on top. Y'all, look how good this looks. Oh my gosh. This is ridiculous. It was so freaking good. But I had to put some of the cheese whiz on top and it was absolutely perfect. And I also toasted the bun. I just didn't show you guys again since I showed you before. But I felt like the toasted bun really makes the sandwich. 
Alright guys, definitely hope you all have enjoyed this video. Comment down below, let me know if you like Philly cheese sandwiches and if you do, how do you make yours unique? Because almost everyone I speak to has a different way of making their Philly cheesesteak sandwiches. Some use mushrooms, one of my friends likes black olives. So give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in the next video. Bye friends!